Louisa May Alcott's Little Women, published in 1868, is the timeless story of the four March sisters set in New England during the Civil War. While their father's away serving on the side of the Union, and their mother works to support the family, this coming-of-age story is more than a children's book. It's a story of family drama, tragedy, and romance. The underlying theme of the book is that there is nothing more valuable than virtue or character. I absolutely fell in love with this book the moment I read it. I grew up in an old New England farmhouse built in 1830 and could easily picture the story setting. Our home had massive hearths for fires that kept us warm during the winter with wood my brothers and I cut together. We had creaky floors, small rooms, and everything that goes along with old colonial homes. I cared for our yard and walked on the old stone walls that dated back to the time before the Revolutionary War. I could see myself in that book. But what I couldn't see into was the wonderful and mysterious world of sisters. I was the oldest of three boys. There actually hadn't been a girl born into our family since 1942, so I knew very little about tea parties, plays, and dresses. But I loved the thought of Lori, right there amongst all those girls as an honorary member of their club. Because I'm such a visual person, I took a road trip with my mother before I wrote a note of the score. We drove up historic Route 7 through Connecticut and right to the tip of Massachusetts with one purpose, to take photos of places that might be a part of the Little Women story. When you're scoring a radio drama, you're not working from a visual, you're just listening to voice tracks. I wanted to surround myself with photos of the New England landscape and homes that would inspire me on a daily basis. The most important photo that would take a long time to find would be the house that I imagined the March sisters may have lived in. We stumbled upon this house during our drive, and I immediately knew that this was the house described in the book. I looked at this photo often as I wrote that score. Before I wrote individual character themes for the March sisters, I needed to write the main theme of the story. I thought of my own mother and how she tirelessly raised three rambunctious boys with so much patience, and I drew upon those memories as I crafted the melody. Because the mother character, who they affectionately call Marmy, is so closely tied to the literary themes of the story, I decided that the main theme and Marmy's theme would be one and the same. The main theme needed to be a versatile theme, the kind that you could orchestrate to fit into an epic scene, but also be able to turn it around and play it in a sensitive and pastoral way. You didn't even need to play the entire theme to make your point in the scene. After writing the A and B sections of the theme, I knew that this melody would help cover a lot of ground in this epic story. To talk about the theme for Meg is to talk about a very personal storyline going on in my own life at the time. The theme for Meg was actually written about a year prior. I wrote it for my girlfriend as she had recently broken up with me and I was devastated. Years later, we would find our way back together and even get married. But during the time of composing Little Women, we were far apart, with certainly no hope of ever getting back together. There's a delicateness and beauty in Meg's theme that my now wife embodies. It's a theme I could see Cinderella dancing to at the ball. Years later, when we were getting married, I would reorchestrate this theme, and my wife walked down the aisle as it was played by a string quartet. Jo is easily my favorite character in Little Women. I really saw so much of myself in her. I think she's a deeply misunderstood person who never quite feels like she fits in. A sort of misfit all the time who doesn't want to follow conventional ways in thinking. What I love about Jo is that she's passionate, adventurous, creative, and loyal, but that passion of hers leaves her vulnerable to fits of rage. Jo would actually be the only character that I wrote three themes for, as I felt one theme couldn't encompass her intricate qualities. There's the generous and thoughtful Jo that we see early on when she brings food to the poor German family. This theme would play in a scene like that, as well as moments in the story where she was becoming more of her true self, especially when she has the courage to admit she loves the professor. Through the music, you can just feel her blossoming. There's a theme in harmonization that represents the extreme sadness she feels at times. People like Jo, who can experience the highs of life, also feel the lows more than others. There's a beautiful melancholy voicing in the strings that reveal the tension Jo lives in, wanting to be joyful amidst her circumstances, but struggling to do so. Finally, there's the adventure theme for Jo, which is certainly a nod to Aaron Copeland. 
This theme is played when she dashes off to New York to become a writer or just being her tomboy self. By the end of the project, I really found myself yearning for a daughter of my own one day. I thought that if I were to have a daughter, I would love her to be like Jo. Someone who thinks outside the box, someone who is smart and strong. Seven years later, I got that and a whole lot more. My wife and I named her Jordan, and it wasn't until her little brother struggled to say Jordan and then called her Joe instead that I realized I got everything I wished for. I dedicated Best Theme to my good friend Toby Burkhart, who passed away when we were both 23 years old. While my friend Toby doesn't embody Best personality, I drew upon the memory of losing such a close friend at a young age and channeled that into Best Theme. The theme conveys Beth's childlike perspective and faith in the world. Everyone loved Beth, and she loved everyone. Due to the manner in which the radio drama was produced, Amy really never developed a fully stated theme. I created a recurring motif for Amy in her younger years that would represent her younger and more spoiled attitude. I wrote a theme to represent the blooming relationship of Joe and the professor, as there was so much tenderness there. I dedicated it to the woman I have not yet met, as I thought about my own hopes and dreams for a relationship. Years later, my wife would tell me that this was the piece of music that made her wonder about getting back together with me. I wrote nearly two hours of music for this production. I've never written more music than that for a single project, and I created this massive checklist with all the cues and their status taped to my studio wall. It would be these sheets that kept me moving forward and helped me track my progress. I was very young when I took the conductor's podium for our recording sessions. I've said this before, but recording orchestras can be tough on young composers. The first cue we recorded was the main title, and I remember after the rehearsal of this cue, everything was silent. I heard a single and affirmative comment from the first viola player, who was a huge arranger in Nashville. It was with her nod of approval that I knew the sessions were going to be great. This score was the true formation of my team that would carry forward for years. We worked at Oceanway Studios in Nashville. Terry Christian was our recording engineer. My brother Adam mixed the score in Chicago. David Angel was our contractor. David Davidson, who would go on to play some incredible solos in The Hiding Place, played the violin solos. And Don Brin, who also played on The Hiding Place, played the piano parts. I was so sad when I turned in the masters to Little Women, as it was the most joyful scoring process I've ever been a part of. I loved waking up each day and writing music to that story. I knew where the story was headed and couldn't wait to get to each scene. I just loved being in the company of those sisters. I'll always look back at the month scoring Little Women as the time when my hopes and dreams for a future family were formed. As always, I'm so grateful to Dave Arnold and Focus on the Family for giving me this opportunity to write music for such an iconic piece of American literature. (laughs) ¶¶ 